Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back to Deflating and Escaping Atheism, our weekly bi-channel chat on atheism and the skeptic community's folly, uh, follies. Uh, my name is Max Colbe. With me, as usual, is Deflating Atheism. How you doing tonight, Deflating? Hey, I'm doing okay. A little, a little underslept, but, but, but rare in the go. I understand what that's like, being a nerd on all. Um, you can sleep when you're dead, man. Um, so this this is I, I'm 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 only breaking to all this news fairly recently myself, but as it happens, I know every single one of the YouTubers involved have even spoken to most of them in the past. Um, there's been a huge breaking stink storm in the online atheist. Oh, I guess they're calling themselves the skeptics now. But have you noticed that, they, that, that there's three words that are code word for atheist: atheist, skeptic, and rationalist. Oh yes, yes, yes. Humanist, whatever. Occasionally humanist. Free thinker, free yeah, thinker. yeah, free thinker. Yeah, but 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 they've they've grabbed rational like they own rational, and yes. they grab skeptic like they own skepticism. And, and, and free thinker is defined by a set of conclusions you must not, under any circumstance, arrive at. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you're, free, you're free to reach any conclusion except the one that God exists. Yes. I'm sorry, but Sargon of Akkad um, is a mealy mouthed apologist at best for online doxers and harassers, um, shoe on head, uh, armored skeptic. Even I'm, this one really pains me because I've always really liked Matt Jarbo. But Monday, Matt, not looking good for him. TJ Kirk, we always knew he was a corrupt, hateful fuck, but my God, is he complete whore, complete whore, TJ Kirk. Um, selling his credibility, and that credibility is now shot, if he ever had much. Um, if you haven't heard about the Candid Saga, um, what it amounts to is that harmful opinions, who's been sort of loosely aligned with the the sort of you know sort of right wing ish anti social justice atheist brigade, um, without I think over the long term realizing what a bunch of hateful bunch of narcissistic psychos most of them are. I'm sorry, but they are. You could tell by them and by the people who hang around them, uh, especially their fans. Um, they all endorsed this new alternative media platform called Candid. And they all got paid to advertise it. And it turned out that, in fact, the, 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 the capitalists, the venture capitalists behind and the investors behind Candid were specifically looking to get so-called skeptics to endorse their products. And, and, and that by itself isn't necessarily bad, but, I mean, it's a brilliant bit of marketing. It struck me not long ago. Hmm. If I wanted to launch a new product and I didn't want to get savaged on the internet, what would I do? I would go flatter the ego of people who make their bones crapping on other people and tearing them apart. So I would go to the skeptics because once I had buttered them up, why <laughs> anybody who criticized my product would expect to be savaged automatically. Yeah. And then to top it all off, it, you know, it comes out in this series of videos by harmful opinions that the CEO and, and others at Candid tacitly admitted this and just were kind of fearless about asking the online atheists that, that they had bribed, that they had paid to help them savage and dox somebody and get critical information on them. They went so far as to go after harmful opinions as mother. Um, and the thing is, uh, Brett Keane and me and others have documented numerous instances of atheists in this circle going out of their way to harass people just for fun. Yes. Um, and severely harass them, dox them, chase them down at work for being not atheist or critical of atheism or having any religious views they didn't like. They have a especially, special hate for Catholics, actually. Um, and... Uh, they really enjoy harassing people. I've talked to multiple people they've done it to just for fun. And there's been, always been every reason to believe many of them do it for cash. Um, if they don't do it themselves, they laugh at and enable people who do it. Um, this is part of the whole online atheist experience these days. Um, and now we have them already, they've, they've been sought out. As, in other words, it's like you've gone to a mafia that you know hurts people and slanders people and smears people and, and brought them in to endorse your product. And now all of them are covering ass for this company, and there's some bad stuff to say about this company and its products. But what I think is worse is 
not that there's bad things to say about the company's product, but if you were part of Gamergate from the beginning when I was there, I cannot believe I am sitting here, back when it was still called Five Guys Burgers and Fries, what really set off the tinderbox was that Mundane Matt, a.k.a. Matt Jarbo, got his video pulled um, because it was critical, mildly, of uh, Depression Quest and and reviews of Depression Quest. And I can't remember, was it, I think it was Zoe Quinn, maybe it was Randy Harper. Can't remember which one did it to him, because whichever one wrote, wrote Depression Quest, it looks like. And that uncovered a scandal of of game reviewers who were in collusion and being bribed and taken. And now, uh, Harmful Opinions got his video pulled for noting the same kind of collusion. I mean, yes, there's no sex scandal, per se, that we know of. Um, but, and I doubt there is one, but um, <laughs> it's the same shit. Somebody's embarrassed, somebody's being doxxed, somebody's being harassed, somebody's lost his channel. Yeah. Um, uh, all for what appears to be completely factual reporting by Harmful Opinions. Uh, completely factual and not not even disputable. And he's being punished, and he's yeah. being called names. He even had a Sargon of Akkad was going after him for being autistic. Seriously, calling him <laughs> autistic. <laughs> That's to his a whole face, community right there. <laughs> to his, uh, well, I know, especially because he is autistic. So he was literally a tip picking on autistic man for being autistic. Now. I kind of get that in the sense of, you know, I've said to some of my more spurgish friends, stop being so autistic, yeah. but they know it's a not out of hate. It's not out of spite. It's not because I'm saying they're stupid. It's just that they're missing a point know, somewhere. Dial, dial it back a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, exact. Dial it back a little bit. It's, it's all going over what I call the standard bits of atheist narrative, which by the way, are the same as feminist narrative. Namely that if the person has nailed you on a fact you can't respond to, change the subject to their personality. Yeah, change the subject to their motives, change the subject to their own, you know, wherever they come from. Yes. Anything but acknowledge the truth of the allegations. Yes. That what's really happening most likely is that all these people, um, you know, basically uh, endorsed a product they didn't really look very closely at. And that's not a mortal sin, but then wouldn't own it probably because they got cash and probably because they have to give the cash back if they ever criticize the company because that's a common clause they put on media celebrities. It means all of these people are bought. They have no integrity or ethics left. Yeah. They're bought. You don't know who else they're on the payroll for either. In fact, there's reasons to believe a number of them um, have been willing to do political hits on people just for being religious or for having other opinions they didn't like. Yes. That's, that's common behavior in atheist circles. We know it goes on. So the next question for shoe on head, armored skeptic, Sargon of Akkad, hell, even you, Matt, even though I suspect you're better than them, uh, how much of this sort of internet harassment and collusion are you all aware of and how much did you participate in? It's a fair question. We know it goes on. Yes. I, I think I think uh, uh, the point we really need to kind of underline here is that I mean you and I both understand that sponsorships are just part of the internet. I mean, yeah, sure. Uh, no, my, you can my, sponsorship. My channel is Trisha Paytas. She probably had more to do with me getting on YouTube than any Christian or atheist. But so I understand that like sponsorships are just part of the game. But the thing is, is that is, is that uh, Candid actually sponsored counter videos attacking people who attack Candid. Oh, yeah. And we're looking for p members of the atheist skeptic community, yes. well known for this sort of skullduggery, to go and get dirt on harmful opinions. And whether any of the named people I just said, TJ, Joy, any of you people knew about that, you know some, you had friends doing it. You yeah. know you did. Um, whether you partici uh, participated in that, or you know, one of your cronies in the atheist community went and did that dirt even if you didn't do it. And you probably won't out them if you know about it. And I'll bet you more than one of you do, does know who did the deed. You've yeah. just got the plausible deniability thing going on. I've been in the atheist chat rooms and talked to other people who've been in there. We're not the only, I'm not the only person here who's left your community and knows how it operates. It's just nice to see a lot of this finally coming to light. Yes, um, yeah. poor, poor harmful opinions. Not a religious man. I think probably leans atheist, whatever. But look what they've done for him, for being fact to him, for being factual, and for calling yeah. them to account. Um, 
and I, I think it really it really just uh, uh, points to the fact that that this whole quote unquote anti SJW skeptic community is a pocket demographic that can be marketed to, and yep. I hope. I do hope that maybe uh, uh, for some skeptics, some like teenagers who've seen some YouTube videos and just accept that as gospel, maybe they see these things adding up. Maybe they see Jacqueline Glenn's uh, uh, plagiarizing. Maybe they see this, the candid, the, the kind of venality and opportunism of so many of the skeptics. And maybe they're going to end up putting two and two together and, and, and realize that they're being pandered to. That oh, yeah. people these people are, are, are just appealing to their own kind of desperation to feel validated in a group and actually profiting monetarily from it. That yeah, well, they when they go to these skeptic conferences and they buy uh, Richard Dawkins books, someone is profiting off of making them feel like they're part of an intellectual vanguard. Yes. In fact, I'm going to repeat what I've said before. I know you don't quite buy me, but if you see the level of collusion in the, in the mainstream media and you go back 10 years and you go, who was pushing the whole uh, new atheist thing in the first place? It was all various garden variety liberals and leftists um, making these people celebrities. Because if you had even asked smart uh, thinkers, theologians, philosophers, even scientists at the time, there was never anything weighty about any of those four horsemen, yeah. except to some extent Daniel Dennett. Um, and, and it's, but, but their most, their most effective critics have always been ignored by the media and we can, and they're not just all William Lane Craig, believe me, he's got, they've got even more credible critics than that. And they've always had them, but they get silenced. They got ignored by the mainstream media. And then atheist skeptics come in to downvote videos, harass people, yes. chase them off the internet, file phony DMCAs on them, get their channels taken down. This is what atheists do on the internet. Yeah. Harmful opinions talked about a skeptic mafia. Others in his uh, uh, comments were talking about it too. Yeah, there's a fucking quote unquote skeptic mafia. And what they really mean by skeptic is a certain breed of scientismist, uh, 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 dogmatic <laughs> atheist. <laughs> yeah, I, I had to we're practice saying a few times. No, he's a scientismist. Okay. Um, science has all the answers, uh, yes. but only the. the only the, 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 the scientists I trust, like, you know, Thunderfoot, who's basically yeah. qualified to be a junior college teacher. Um, yeah. I don't mean to be mean to the guy, but please, he ate his own. Ugh. All of these people were flattered. They were all told they were smarter than they were. They were all told they were going to be part of a new intellectual vanguard, bringing in science, rationality, evidence, and progress. And they are all um, slightly above average IQ moderately well-educated people. Yeah. Uh, a few PhDs here and there that aren't particularly relevant to anything. Um, and a lot of engineers who have no business in this conversation at all for the most part, um, more than any other layman. And just goobs, goobers who like playing with technology. I'm sorry. You know, you got maybe an average IQ of 110 as a group. And I mean that group of, of YouTubers. These I, I, I would put in Richard Dawkins there, by the way. He, he can't, he's not that bright. No. <laughs> and so they, but they've all been flattered. Not, so they know they're a little smarter than the average bear, because they are. Yeah. And they all think they're super geniuses. And they were told to think of themselves that way. Yes. Yes, yes. I agree. Uh, and then there was the skepticism. It was about five years ago, right? That whole blow up with Rebecca Watson and all that. I, I've said it before, but I'll say it again. The anti-SJW atheists were the ones who were intended to be kicked out all along. The I mean, military. yeah, I mean, I'm, it's a joke because it's not quite that military, but still, yes. And so they're trying to capture that. I'm an atheist, so I'm smarter than everybody else vibe. That's yeah. what this click is. That's what Sargon of Akkad is. That is what, you know, uh, Joy and her boyfriend and, and, and all those people are. And they're a big suck up to each other crowd thinking they're going to be the new intellectual vanguard. Yes, yes. And they want to take that away from the left wing ones and make themselves the intellectual vanguard. Yes. Never but once considering, did you enjoy, did you deserve that title in the first place? Sorry, go ahead, man. No, I was just, I, I was just going to say, I don't know if you, if you read the comments to my uh, redestruction of TMM video, but it's like all the TMM guys got on my thing and said, this is just like, a, a, this is just like an anti-atheist circle jerk. I'm like, am I living in an upside down world? This has been the entire history of the internet since 2005. It's just been a 
gigantic atheist circle jerk on Reddit in YouTube comments and Facebook comments. You yep. get something even vaguely resembling the opposite, and suddenly they're up in arms. Oh, they and they think that atheists complimenting other atheists is just the natural, healthy state of affairs. <laughs> Exactly. But criticizing an atheism, that must yeah. be hate speech. Hate speech. In fact, we got an idiot um, sent a, made a video, got over 2,000, got a lot of views too. He's calling himself Godless Engineer, accusing me of Christian hate speech for the videos I've made with my yeah. son. Uh, we might respond to that one of these days, but it's hilarious because they can't respond to the content. They still can't respond to even any of this content. So they always go for character assassination. Yeah, uh uh, he actually he actually made uh, two videos based on my videos, and what I, what I like is that he loves accusing you of, of logical fallacies based on things you left unsaid. So you'll make like an offhand observation, and then he'll add another premise that you never said, and then he'll add a conclusion that you never said, and then accuse you of making a logical fallacy just because. This is this is why engineers engin engineers should not be allowed in the in the conversation. They are the stereotypical autists um, minus the genuine gentle uh, self-effacing uh, side of the nicer autistics he's so full of shit they have to make things up and make up arguments you didn't make and yeah. accuse you of things I, you I, don't I, believe the atheist when, whenever an atheist says so what you're basically saying is dot 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 and you know that what they say after that is going to bear no relation to anything you said yep but you keep saying engineers. Uh, uh, just a little interesting uh, factoid here. You know what other group uh, uh, disproportionately attracts engineers? Besides. ISIS. ISIS. Yes. L look oh, it up. It doesn't, it doesn't surprise, surprise me. It doesn't surprise me. See, as an old nerd, I remember when there were a lot of Christian engineers and Christian geeks around. Yeah. Um, they were mostly a certain type of autistic leaning uh, 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 guy who just obsessed on the Bible and. Yes. Um, you know, almost had the stupid Bible memorized and could just spit something out almost, almost on command to prove any point they wanted, which is a weird subset of Christianity on its own. Now they're all just angry atheists instead. Yeah. <laughs> and I miss the fundamentalists yeah. with the Bible back, even though they drove me crazy and still do. It's like, come on back. I mean, that's the thing. The nerd community used to have a lot of religious people in it. Hmm. And, and, and actually it still does, but uh, we've been sidelined. You know, we need yeah. to be in our own little corner because we're not wanted by the sensible nerds. Um, I know, anyway, I got off on a rant there, but um, the bottom line is what I hope more young people, especially who've been caught up in this little bubble of, oh, she was nice to me. Oh, isn't armor kind of cool? Oh, look how yeah. he took that down. Sargon's <laughs> got the wonderful voice. He's so smart. Somebody else we'll, we'll call this demographic. It's not Emmy. This demographic, it's not Emmy. I, I think her parents control her, but yeah, okay, we'll say the, yeah, the teeny boppers who think that this is brilliance personified. No, none of it. Atheism, it does not make you more scientific. It does not make you more inclined to believe things on evidence. It does not make you smarter. It does not make you superior in any way, shape, or form. It gives you nothing. It does nothing for you except makes you an arrogant asshole too much of the time. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, you're superior by virtue of the thoughts you're not having. That's, yeah. that's, what, that's what elevates you to the upper echelon, is, is that you're not thinking about, is that you've uh, imposed these completely arbitrary restrictions on your thinking. And, that's, and, you, uh, and you've assumed yourself as part of an intellectual elite by so yeah. doing. Yes. And, and then you wonder why after 10 years, surveys still say that atheists are the wide, most widely disliked demographic. There's something in atheist behavior that might just be causing that. Yes. yes. <laughs> and and uh, what I want to say is I get, I, congratulations. I get shit for this, but I don't care. Atheists have no morals, okay? They're capable of moral behavior, but they don't have any morals. They can't. And they can't really have ethics either. Um, both require uh, a, a appeal to something higher than human. Yes. They just do. Even professional ethicists um, who are atheists are starting to admit you have to take Pascal's wager and assume a God just to get anything coherent in your ethics. This is after decades of atheists trying to assemble uh, sensible ethics. And the yeah. best they've come up with in sensible ethics that atheists have come up with in the last half century that I can see is the social justice, secular humanist left, and fucking objectivism. There. Oh, really. There is no ethics in, in, in atheism. It doesn't exist. Mm. 
And 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 so if you, I mean if you don't want to become religious or Christian, that's fine. May I commend you to Plato or Aristotle? I mean, atheist uh, 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 Stefan Molyneux at least had had the guts to do that, and he came away from Aristotle looking sort of humbled yeah. and a lot more open-minded. I don't think he's actually converted or anything, but now he's talking to. Not just everyday Christians, but smart, reasonable, sensible religious people, including Christians and including Catholics. And he's learning things. Yes. Gee, isn't that what a free thinker is supposed to do? Yes. Getting to know the people who don't think like you? Getting to know ideas you haven't really entertained? I'm mm -hmm. sorry. I, I, you, I'm just going on and on. <laughs> I cannot believe this, but, but, and this is, this is where it all gets down to. There's no ethics in these people. All the mm. people I just named have no ethics. And if they claim they have ethics, please tell me what it is that isn't based on sentiment and eye rolling. I challenge any of you, especially you, Sargon of Akkad, because I remember being in a hangout with you personally and getting you to agree that there was such a thing as an atheist cult. Um, have you ever, have you talked about that since? And have you looked for cult-like behavior in yourself, your followers, and your friends? Have you really looked, sir? Just asking. My, my, <laughs> old, uh, my old kind of uh, uh, aphorism about that is that athe atheism is a self-esteem cult for geeks. It's, oh ba God. it's all basically based on self-esteem, you know. Yes, it's what they've all been. I, I think, I think dimwit intellectuals like Sam Harris and Richard Dawkins, and by the way, I will stand by calling them both dimwits, um, and pseudoscientists. Um, they are not all that intelligent, but they were brought in by people who wanted to promote atheism, basically by being told and flattered that they're smarter than they are because they're not very smart. And then their hangers-on are the same way. They're just a notch less smart. You can almost see it like a Peter principle of atheism. Every generation gets a little less bright. <laughs> really, this Bertrand is, Russell was smarter than this. Yeah. I don't think Bertrand, uh, Bertrand, Russell, Bertrand that Russell I mean, I mean if, if you look at, like, I was just, like, seeing something where, where he did, like, the distribution of A and some all. And he's just, just like, in, in linguistics, he did something about distribution, distributional modifiers. I'm like, this is a smart guy. But the, the problem with with atheists in general, certainly with 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 uh, Richard Dawkins and his uh, acolytes, is that uh, it's it's not you know obviously they're of above by objective metrics they're of above average intelligence. Sure. But what what really hobbles them is their complete lack of intellectual modesty, where they insist on speaking on subjects that is totally beyond their ken. That's no. right. And I, then I re repeating useless false assertions like there's no evidence for God, yes. which is a lie and yeah. demonstrably a lie. And it's just a thought terminating cliche. That's the sort of thing 20 years ago. There's no evidence would have gotten you either laughed at or, you know, yeah. like consider, wow, you're an asshole. What do you mean? No evidence. By now way, it's just like, they just assert that. I'm sorry, but go ahead. Fun fact. Uh, <laughs> If, if you hate fun. Uh, I have lost three real-life friendships because I held people's feet to the fire when they said there is no evidence for God. I said, how do you know that? I, yeah. I would not know. Oh, no, you convinced me there. No, I'm, I'm going to hold your feet to the fire. How do you know if you're going to tell me that there is no evidence for God? I, have, I, have, you know, I obviously disagree with that comment. Uh, prove to me. Why do you think that? No, I don't have to prove anything. <laughs> would rather have unfriended me, literally unfriended me in real life, than admit that they made a comment without justification. I, that, that is so sacred to them. They will not let go of it, and you press it, and they'll just circle right back around to the premise, oh, well, there is no evidence for God because nobody has ever found any evidence for God. Well, no, now you're just rephrasing your original uh, uh, premise. <laughs> you can't use the premise, it, a, a rephrased form of a premise, to justify itself. Sir, you know? I rationally came to my conclusions based on evidence, and I stand where I am. I said this on Matt Dillahunty's channel. I'm sure he'll just mark me as spam. We have no burden of proof at all. I came to my conclusions rationally based on evidence. Thank you. Um, <laughs> more than sufficient for me. Um, if it's not yeah. sufficient for you, tell me why it's not sufficient. Yes. For, yeah, because it's more than sufficient for me, and it's more yeah. than 
enough that I'm happy to teach it to my children who yeah. understand it, including my teenager who's an ex-atheist, not because I browbeat him, but because he figured out it was a bunch of cynical, nasty, shallow bullshit on his yeah. own. I'm so proud. And he's still not out of his teens. Yeah. Uh, the, I mean, I mean, the whole the whole atheism movement is very adolescent, and l like an adolescent, they assume that the limits of their knowledge and the limits of their experience is the limits of everyone's knowledge and experience. So if they don't know that there's evidence, you know, that there's evidence for God, they just assume that nobody else has a justification. Well, they, or they assume that, or that Ray Comfort and Ken Ham have all the answers. Yeah, um, you know, the all the answers worth responding to. Um, yeah. And and then you know the creation scientists. I'm sorry, fundamentalist evangelicals. I don't like creation science. I never will. Yeah. Um, deal with it. You're a minority of a minority. Um, and, then, and then, but the atheists want to pick on them, and they yeah. won't pick on someone their own size. They won't pick on someone who can take them apart. None of them will, because they're also cowards. And yeah. that's another class for you know for thousands of years, not just Christians, but thousands of years, people in other cultures, including pre-Christian cultures, including non-Abrahamic cultures, including pagan cultures, said the same thing. Atheists are impious, nasty, shallow, hateful, shifty, un, un, unreliable, cowardly, backstabbing, gossiping things. <laughs> that is the atheist reputation for thousands of years, and Christians didn't make it up. And I used to be an atheist, and one of the reasons I got out is because I noticed all that going on. Yeah, yeah. And I'm and, like, something might be wrong with me. I just considered it. Yeah. Theoretical thought, huh? <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. They have dominated a discussion on YouTube. And uh, you'll hear talk about, I even heard Shu on Head say she very rarely talks about atheism, but she, she even just recited this talking point that, yes, uh, atheists have slain the dragon of Christianity and they've just triumphed with superior arguments. No, if you're actually spend time on YouTube, you know that's horseshit. Oh my no, God. They've, they've assumed the, the, this, this, this monopoly of all religious discussion by intimidation, by harassment. Uh, we know, we know. Uh, uh, people uh, like I am Manuel who have been harassed, sexually harassed. I know other women who have been sexually harassed off YouTube. I mean, this is their mo. No, it has yeah. nothing to do with rationality because they they still have their little talking points. There is no evidence for, for God. They can't provide any justification for it. No, what they can do is harass people and intimidate people off of YouTube and, and downvote their videos to oblivion. So, which effectually has the same uh, has the same. Uh, effect as, as censorship what's doubly worse there is is that and, I, and thunderfoot used to do this i wonder if he finally if he ever stopped phil mason um I, I still see atheists doing that they will they will tell you about a video and then say look at all the downvotes and the negative comments yes. Yes. as proof that you can just laugh at them and don't even need to go watch the video yourself yeah yeah they do yeah. that and and that's that's both psychological uh mind games and it's actively lying to their audience because I mean, it's, it's a classic thing you go to your fa if you're an atheist and you feel challenged you go to your favorite atheist gurus at the S committee for the scientific investigation for the paranormal which is now effectively just an atheist front group um you know any of the so-called skeptic groups they're all controlled now they're all completely ideological and go to them to get your answers Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing on YouTube. And you go to your, your you, you know, Jacqueline Glenn will give you the answer or Lee Lemon will give you the answer or, yeah. or, or, or uh, Myonic Dance. If, <laughs> oh, my God. You're, you're really, you're really. Uh, okay. Nobody goes to her for, her for answers. They just go there for validation. <laughs> they go to Thunderfoot. They go to Sargon. They go to anybody to get the answer to things they can't answer because they need their atheist gurus to be right about everything. Yes. I, I like. I always liked. Uh, uh, I actually got banned from. Uh, by the way, that's another thing I want to. I, I got banned, obviously, from from Reddit. They they kicked me off our atheism. But I love. Uh -huh. You have these college students who say, "Oh, my professor told me about the ontological argument today. Uh, please tell me how this is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> please tell. Please tell me. You know, your little prepackaged uh, uh, dismissal of this, so so I can accept it as true. Yeah. Yeah. yeah atheism is not a conclusion. Yeah, yeah. By the way, by the way, 
Huh? This is just a little amusing thing. Uh, I know because of my Google search terms, I'm sure you get this too, because I, I do a lot of uh, atheism-related Google searches. So I get a lot of the sponsored content on Facebook, as I assume you do too. Sure, you sure. T-shirts and stuff. Well, there was this one thing that said, it said like, uh, uh, science is the poetry of reality, and it had a little atheism, it had your little atheism logo uh, over the A in reality. And so uh, I posted like two comments. I said, well, no, it's, it's, you know, Christians can enjoy science and nature too. And you're all these Christian scientists. I got banned. I got blocked. Of course you did. Of I course you did. A sponsored thing for, for an atheist t-shirt that they had on Facebook. And the game they'll play is that they think they can't otherwise dox you. Uh, they'll, they'll spread lies about you. I've had numerous lies spread by atheists about me and they just do it. Yeah. This is their MO, just like you just said. It's yeah. all about character assassination. It's all about evasion. It's all about changing the subject. Mm -hmm. um, it's never about a reasonable conversation. They declare victory and destroy, want to destroy anybody who's not them. Yes. It's, and then they'll dissemble and say it's just lack of belief. Yeah. <laughs> There's no yeah. evidence, and they regurgitate that shit. And yeah, well, now we're talking to ourselves. But to me, Gamergate ended now. Um, I was one of the er earliest people in Gamergate back when it was truly just a bunch of angry nerds who didn't appreciate being slagged off about. And it ended, you know, really, this is a Matt Jarbo getting, getting his video pulled moment. This is, this is Brianna Wu, Randy Harper behavior. It's typical atheist behavior is what it is. This is what the so-called skeptic community is right now. And if you doubt me, tell you what, go find your, any prominent skeptic. And I'm going to call it any skeptic I know who will say, I, I have no responsibility for this. Really? These people call themselves the skeptics. You want me to disambiguate them from you? No, that's your job. You're part of them until you choose to disambiguate. I, yeah. I, it's the same as I, if, you, if you're a friend of mine and you're still calling yourself an atheist, I will take it that until you do, do something to clean up this mess, you're part of it. I don't care if you like hearing that or not. Uh, in fact, if you're an atheist and you say, I got no responsibility here, or you're so-called skeptic and you say, I have no responsibility from here, what you've effectively affirmed is that atheists and skeptics are seedy people who will not take responsibility for jack shit, who will rationalize everything while sitting silent about generalizations about religious people. Um, so you, yeah. Even just that term skeptic community shows you that they're affirming something and they are a demographic that is marketed to and they all buy the same t-shirts and they all buy the same books, you know? That's right. That's right. And, and, there's, and the name itself it is dishonest. Yes. Because they mean skeptical of claims of anything operating that science can't explain. Yeah, they right. mean skeptical of God. They mean skeptical of religion. They don't mean skeptical of themselves. Yeah. They don't mean skeptical no, of their no, own... There's no skepticism when they say if if someone in their presence says ah ha ha God is God is a, a fairy tale God is Santa Claus they're not going to investigate that claim. I've seen a few like one of my favorites on Twitter is a guy named Ethical Skeptic who will call them on that and there's a few others yeah. I've seen they they're very rare but they do exist I'm like wait a minute you just said there's no God can you prove yeah. that. Um, wait a minute, you said there's no need for God. Well, there are pretty strong arguments even in physics that are like, no, there is strong reason to think that's a good idea. You know, the prime mover was used by a lot of physicists as an idea to explain how physics work, including, you know, scientists who gave you the, the scientists who gave you the Big Bang yeah. took concepts like the prime mover seriously. Um, sure. So did Heisenberg. Yeah, and George Lemaitre, um, and, and so to sit there and say there's no reason, no use, well, that's just nonsense. Yeah. And that's the opposite of free thinking. Yes, yes, yes. You know, I had an hour-long conversation about a guy whose kid had, run, had fallen away from Catholicism, and all we talked about, we didn't even talk about Catholicism, um, because it was like the kid had turned atheist. And what we spent time doing is all these stupid things you have to assume are true that you can't prove or true when you're an atheist yes. and you know I think that's more helpful than anything because really this is they're convincing people of things that aren't true and then silencing anybody who ever scrutinizes them is skeptical of them or calls them to the carpet for anything yes. there's literally no honor in this group and that's because <laughs> they have no ethics or morals prove me wrong
Ask any one of them to tell me what their ethical standards are derived from. You can ask me, and by the way, I won't just say the Bible and stick my finger in my nose. Oh, they'll say, they'll say, oh, Christians I will not do that. Other than, say, other than their book. They'll say that. And that's a claim. You just made a claim. Now, can you prove that Christians have no reason to believe other than their book? Yeah, look at I'm Thomas. Very, look at Thomas. Very, uh, there, you'll see this in, 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 in meme graphics a lot. They, they actually think that Christians are not allowed to read any other books besides the Bible. For some oh, my God. It was St. Thomas Aquinas who said, I fear the man of one book. I fear the man of one book. That's not Mark Twain. That's St. Thomas Aquinas, yeah. um, the Catholic theologian, yes. um, who read all sorts of things, including and got drew great inspiration <laughs> from from Muslim and Jewish thinkers like like Maimonides. Yeah. Um, uh, if you're such a free thinker, you should be investigating great thinkers like Maimonides and Thomas Aquinas, rather as a free thinker. <laughs> yeah. Rather than uh, calling it Harry Potter magic, you dumb fucks. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, the, their 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 reading list does not ex does not extend past two thousand five. In think. fact, I think if if I look at the average internet atheist now, the reading list appears to be Richard Dawkins, Pendulette, um, maybe Jerry Coyne, um, and Harry Potter. Yeah, that appears to be the reading list. Maybe a little uh, James uh, Randi. And some Harry Potter books. I mean, uh, okay. really. Uh, go back to another uh, atheism meme graphic. I have a pen, so, so it's serious. But no. Uh, uh, Is it an Apple pen? No, sorry. Don't. Uh, do just a regular, regular ballpoint pen. But yes, I, I, I'm sure you've seen the one. It has the the woman with her Bible and the gun, and then the uh, Muslim woman with her Koran and her gun. And it has like the fat nerd with those telescope and this entire bookshelf of books. <laughs> <laughs> books. Or, or like, or like Richard Dawkins, Carl Sagan, all that kind of insipid, you know, pandering horseshit. So instead of one book, you have a, a you have like three dozen books that all express the same viewpoint. Yeah, so, exactly. It's not like you're gonna start reading Thomas Aquinas because you've already been you've already been incul inculcated with the idea that they have nothing to offer. And the thing is, though, that while I agree that they're basically really incredibly closed-minded, narrow-minded people, that is, atheists as a rule, incredibly closed-minded, incredibly dogmatic, incredibly spiteful, um, uh, very narrow, narrow crabbed minds, most of them, um, uh, the, 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 the portrayal of them as merely harmless nerds doesn't work because they seek political power. Yes. I yeah. mean, and, and they're gating it. They're getting yeah. it. I've seen it even in CNN now has openly acknowledged that secular humanism is in, uh, is atheism in clash with Christianity, that that's what secular is, humanism is. CNN's more or less acknowledging that now, calling secular humanism the atheist position, because it, that, because it's, because it is, it's about 70% yeah. of atheists who to it. The minority of them who don't are all some kind of libertarian or whatever. Yeah. Um, and, it's just one of the things you can say about atheists. Um, once you realize that there's nothing scientific about them and that they are incredibly cliquish and incredibly crabbed and closed-minded, the spell will be broken. I don't care whether you come to Jesus or not. You'll realize, oh, my God, these people are so full of shit because they are. Every single one of them is full of shit. I'll even say this now. I think, I think, Dr. L the two YouTuber atheists I know who I think are too smart to keep this up um, Vernaculus, too smart to keep it up. Crouton T, too smart to keep it up. Maybe pro oh, and Dr. Lehman, too. There's three. They're too smart to keep thinking that atheism makes them so makes them something special. Yeah. I don't know any of them, but yeah. They're pretty good. Um, okay. but, 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 I mean, uh, there are people who I know who are better than this. Yeah. Um, and guess what? None of them would want to lead an atheist movement. Yeah. <laughs> These yeah. others all do want to be – they're all little cults of personality. Yeah. And little oh, smart. Huh? Go ahead. Are you like me? Do you hold out hope that maybe the all these things, like the Jacqueline Glenn uh, uh, plagiarizing, all these things will add up and and hopefully give little kids pause for thought? I tell you, one of the things I'm definitely finding, and it really makes me smile, a lot of really smart young Christians, um, and and not some smart young Muslims, I'm afraid. Um, I, I don't. Uh, we'll have a whole hangout one day on Islam, but. Mm -hmm. Teenagers figuring out that atheism is bullshit on their yeah. own. Yes. Because it's not that hard to figure out that it's, athe that it's bullshit. Yeah. Um, it, it really, it, I'm, I'm embarrassed it took me so long, but part of it was because I spent so many years only looking at atheist intellectuals hoping to get some kind of answer.
Yeah. You know, not realizing I'd sort of close something off. And I've read me some smart ones, including your Doug Hofstetter's and Steven Pinker's and all those guys without ever letting it, you know, eventually got in on me. They're ideological. They're starting yeah. with ideological assumptions, all of them. Well, Douglas Hofstadter only fairly recently uh, affirmed a – back when he wrote, wrote uh, Gerdell Escher-Bach, I think he was more kind of open. Um, yeah, he was more or less trying to construct a materialist universe, um, but he was leaving open room for, you know, the anatomy. Effable yeah. um, randomness, but he was still trying pretty hard to fit everything into a materialist perspective. Not blatantly, but all of them were, right? Steven Pinker is the same way. If you go back and reread Pinker now, you can see how materialism uh, infuses everything he does, and it's all in the, you know, assume X, Y, and Z, which is why he always turns yeah. stupid when religion comes up. Um, yes. They all turn stupid when religion comes up because they're uneducated in it and it makes them superstitious. Yes. It really does. I've said that too. They get mad and say atheists aren't superstitious. Yes, you are. In fact, yeah. every time you say Bronze Age superstitious, so superstitious, <laughs> you just broadcast your profound ignorance and your yeah. deep arrogance. Um, so many things are, are indictments. So many things atheists think are insults to Christians are actually indictments of their own of their own knowledge and intelligence, like Bronze Age goat herders and Invisible Man in the Sky and all that stuff. It's like, no, you are the ignoramus. All that's proving is that you are the ignoramus. If you think Christians ever believed in Invisible Man in the Sky or or Bronze Age goat herders two thousand years ago, yeah, I I, I really I. <laughs> It's the smugness of it that gets me. It's the yeah. smugness of it more than anything that gets me and the imperiousness that comes with it. Yes. The yes. assumption now that some of them have that they literally have a right to tell us how to educate our children. Yeah. And if we teach our children that there is logical evidence for God, we're brainwashing them. That's yeah. how far it's gone. We're brainwashing our children if we say there's logical evidence for God, even though there is. I actually had an atheist tell me uh, uh, children had to be brainwashed into thinking that science and religion are compatible. <laughs> that was like, that was mind blowingly stupid. It's like, no, you have to be brainwashed into excluding ideas. You're not brainwashed into including ideas. How did Christians, how did, how did Christians and Jews give you the scientific method? Yeah. How did they do that? First off, I, brainwashing is not a is not a clinical phenomenon. Okay, first off, you can call them out on that. No. Oh, are you talking about brainwashing? Please, please show me the uh, clinical uh, research about this brainwashing phenomenon. That that was always my big thing. But uh, yeah, I, I mean, no, it, it, what they're insisting what we do is it, is establish these arbitrary uh, these this arbitrarily bracket our thinking. Well, that would be that would be a limitation. That would be something that you have to be brainwashed into. It's not the opposite. Well, I know. There's something called Sargon's Law, which is funny because he's right. He noted how certain um, political people, you know, say when they spoke, they were always, you know, describing themselves when they were being critical. And nothing describes atheists better when, than when an atheist opens up and starts talking about religion. He's always talking about himself and his friends. Yeah. Uh, every time an atheist talks about religion, he's talking about all of his atheist friends and his skeptic heroes. That's who he's talking about. I can think of no exceptions. Um, name me the pro I mean, I wouldn't call Ra James Randi an exception. I wouldn't call Sam Harris an exception. I wouldn't call anybody at, at the current crop at the Committee for the Scientific Investigation of the Paranormal. I wouldn't call any of them trustworthy. Um, really, uh, how blind do you have to be not to think you're ideological? Yeah. How, how blind do they have to be to not think they're ideological? Yeah. Um, I've never met more crab thinkers in my life. Yeah, and, and their main way of 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 getting rid of any problem is to find somebody to blame, scapegoat, and eliminate. Which is why they all all turn on each other. In fact, mm -hmm. I'm going to make this this prediction. Um, you've already got. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Basically, what you got if you're in atheist politics right now, you you've got one set of whores, dishonest whores, dishonest censorious whores, uh, over on the left, like Steve Shives and and Lacey Green, and over on the right you have this motley crew who's not really any better. 
now who's left? Somebody else going to want to be the new atheists in charge? They were going to. I, 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 I think they're actually a, a quite a bit better in my, in my opinion. But yeah. Well, maybe um, when I see when I see this when I've talked to people, I don't know. Right wing atheism is still nasty as shit, yeah. and I think these people collude in it. Or um, more, wink more and nod at it. Look the other way at it. Yeah. Um, maybe they are better, but if so, they could get a lot better still. Maybe yeah. if they got some actual ethics, and that means accepting that there's something other than yourself. And oh, by the way, religious people might have something useful to add to the discussion. Yes. How about considering that one of these days, Carl Benjamin, Sargon of Akkad? Why don't you yeah. have a hangout with someone about that? Yeah. And, and what, what, what harassing religious people and treating them like monkeys, what you think that's going to do for civilization. Yeah. Uh, now I'm just ranting in your chair. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but maybe, still, uh, maybe somebody before 2005 had, had something valuable to contribute. And what I like is even when they uh, reference a thinker older, it, it, it's, it's somehow someone who is responsible for perpetuating historical canards like Robert Ingersoll or Carl Sagan, who a lot of what they said was just false. I mean, just just like historically false when they're talking about religion, but suddenly yep. the, the second-rate thinker from the 19th century, like Robert Ingersoll, is suddenly suddenly hoisted up on the, on the shoulders again. And the same with like Jesus mythicism. It's like, oh, it's convenient, so we'll we'll, we'll take that, you know. Yeah. Oh, hey, m skeptics who are into the whole Jesus myth thing, and you watch yeah. uh, charlatans like the guys at Bible Reloaded. Well, why don't you just try for once being skeptical of the Jesus mythers? Just try it. Yeah. Skeptical of the Jesus mythers, and go read something like I don't know. I haven't even read this, but I hear cold case Christianity is not too bad. There's other thinkers you could read that might. Look at those skeptics. Make you look at those skeptics and go, hmm, my, they're they're arguments aren't so airtight are they yeah by the, way, by the way this is kind of uh, uh, uh off topic uh, at least for us i know probably uh you're not going to be a big fan of this and since you're kind of anti-evangelical yourself but there have been like two trailers for christian market movies i've seen recently i was like those actually look like they might be actually kind of good and one of them is is for the movie version of lee strobel's the case for christ and uh, um, and the other one is some is some comedy, but I'm like, you know, these actually look like they're real movies, you know. I I want to clarify. Um, uh, Andrew Stratelites and I did a hangout on this last night to talk about the evangelical thing. We were very clear to say that there are non-evangelicals who have problems or who cause problems, and that there are good spiritual people on the evangelical side. But yeah, we're both critical. Um, that doesn't mean everything. And go listen to that hangout if you're interested. Me and Andrew Stratelites talked about evangelicals and how we differ from them. Yeah. And I grew up evangelical. But I'm not anti-evangelical exactly because oh, yeah. I know there's some of them are great people. And if they, you know, I'm just always suspicious of their biblical analyses. And I don't like some of the big ones. On the other hand, I don't support censoring them. And I happen to know of at least one Christian movie that was censored on YouTube because yes. atheists got it censored. I can't even remember its title yeah. now because there's... Uh, Rachel Joy, uh, uh, yes, the, the yeah. one, Columbine girl, yeah, yeah, the one about the Columbine girl. Just the vile behavior, the vile behavior of, of, of YouTube atheists. No, yep. they've not assumed the monopoly because of their arguments. They've assumed the monopoly because of harassment and DMCA's and you know downvoting. That's how they've done it because you have a bunch of autists who are very good at clicking buttons and they, and they use robots and sock accounts. Video again and again. That's that's fact. They're very quick to accuse others of using robots and sock accounts, yes. and that's because they all use robots and sock accounts. Yes. I know for a fact. In fact, I've interacted with some of the ones I've mentioned here. I know I've interacted with some of them on their accounts because yes. guess what? I've got friends. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to say more, but really stuff is leaking out of the skeptic community, and I ho hope more. I don't even want to see rats sinking, leave the sinking ship because that implies everybody in that community is a rat. No, but you, everybody in that community, you've been led down a primrose path yeah. by some really skanky, nasty people. You really have been, and it goes all the way to the top. Yeah. It really does. Uh, that's well, how it's – go ahead. I, Brett Keen has a whole dossier on, on, on TJ who we have not really talked about, but but yeah, he, he has some shit on TJ, including a hurricane. Did you ever hear about the Hurricane Katrina Fund? 
No, what's uh, that? He, he had a little, uh, he ran a little fundraiser for uh, like a Hurricane Katrina fund, and it was all just to him. So, well, I, mean, I, I hope that's not true, but I, I'll, I'll be interested what Brett has to say. At yeah. this point, with him, at, he actually was saying that he thinks harmful opinion. Did he say he should be killed? I can't remember, but he certainly, certainly hates harmful opinion for even raising this question. So mm -hmm. let's be clear. He hates harmful opinion for having dared, had the audacity to make these videos and do this. Doesn't for give a shit what's happened true. to him. Yes. For saying there's problems with Canada and there's problems with the, the sponsorship relationship that re reduces some people's credibility. In fact, once you've sponsored a product for money, you should accept that your credibility is down and you're not objective. Mm -hmm. If you had ethics, you would know that. You would say, I'm not objective anymore. I've accepted sponsorship money. Yeah. The end. And you would just admit that. I would admit that in that circumstance. I'm no longer, I would admit, I'm no longer, I'm tainted. I'm no longer, you know, able to comment neutrally because I've received money from these people. So good luck. And, I, you know, then you bow out of the conversation. Yeah. Well, as particularly when the thrust of your channel is that you are critically investigating certain claims. Then you that's can right. And that's why I'll go back to it. I know savvy marketers go after so-called skeptics. Yes. The skeptics love tearing people apart and things apart. So there's the ones you want to cuddle up to. That, yeah. again, is called atheist tyranny in the end. It's like, really, just suck up to the atheist mafia because yeah. there is one. And <laughs> that kind of, back when you were saying, you were talking about. Uh, there's more than one, but yeah. This is <laughs> mafias. Yes. Uh, is is that, that the, the narrative shifts? Much like the left, uh, uh, the narrative shifts once they assume uh, the levers of power. And yep. so when, when, when atheists uh, are, are, are kind of the underdog, then they'll coast along on this, on this kind of image of being iconoclastic and being edgy. But then once they actually get popular, then they'll just, oh, well, the status quo is because it's the status quo. If my, yep. if my video has a lot of upvotes, it's obviously because the, the content is superior. My arguments, arguments are superior. And it's a lot like the left in that regard. Is that I'm the atheist in what? charge now. I'm the yeah. one in charge of all the secularism, and I'm the one in charge of all the science because I'm the smart right. atheist. And, and suddenly being iconoclastic and being edgy and, be, and being, you know, a, a gadfly is no longer good because now it's, it's your duty to protect the status quo, which, you know, is now the status quo for a reason. So, yeah. That's right. And, and now you're thinking about plastic surgery to extend your youth and <laughs> taking more pills. Oh, oh, did I say that out loud? Sorry. Oh, God. <laughs> Oh, atheists are all, there's so many of them are alcoholics and drug addicts oh, and, and are into, and into plastic surgery. And if they're not into that, they're into, they're insane into health improvement stuff and exercise to a ludicrous degree, usually. Sorry, just. <laughs> That's good. Uh, the, uh, most of the ones I see are, are not apparently big fans of exercise. No, <laughs> most of them aren't. But yeah, watch for the cosmetic uh, scars, uh, scars on, on Jacqueline Glenn. Oh, oh, did I say that again? Oh, they'll be coming <laughs> sooner or later. Honey, you don't get, you don't stay young forever. You just don't. Oh, she, um, she's looking more and more ghoulish as, as time goes on. It happens to every atheist girl. Atheist yeah. girls all turn ugly. They all turn into uh, alcoholics. They all turn into neurotic pill poppers or well, really fat and ugly. I'm sorry they do. I know there are exceptions, and I love Adderall. you if you're hearing me, but That's seriously. Why she takes Adderall. Oh, my God, Adderall. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, she's I, a bad I, zone. That's why I said with the, with the It's Not Emmy video, I said it's Generation Adderall, you know? Oh, Generation Natural or benzo one of the two. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god it's so hard listen we've just ranged all over the place but i don't care everybody should go see harmful opinions as videos um more to the point they've been mirrored because his his channel was taken out um yeah. he has a new channel he's calling cyber violence and the interesting thing is he had started out laughing at the idea of cyber violence and now he's pretty much been subjected to it. So it's probably yeah. really got to do with number on everybody's heads. And otherwise, uh, I'm just going to keep watching this. I'm going to say it again. Atheists have no ethics. They don't. And I don't care if it hurts their feelings for me to say it. If they have ethics, tell me where you get them. By the way, no, I don't get mine from whooping out a Bible. You can look up something called Thomistic Natural Law if you want to get more into where I come from. There's other ethical systems too. Try Aristotle, try Plato, 
Try pretty much anybody who took God seriously. You'll find it a lot easier to understand the whole idea of ethics again. Yeah. Um, take it, go to your godless universe. Sorry, doesn't work. The best atheist ethicists are increasingly just admitting. And, and, and certainly up. don't take uh, uh, some guy like, like, like Sam Harris, who, who takes the non-metric of creaturely flourishing and just redefines it as ethics. Yeah. You can't redefine something in ethics and think you've solved the problem. You're either going to deny there's any such thing as an atheist ethic, or you're going to wind up uh, saying, which means you're saying atheists have no ethics, or um, you're going to wind up uh, adopting some weird, uh, quirky system based on your personal sentiment, your personal interests, and who you like. That's 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 where atheism always takes you ethically, and otherwise, and that's why atheists are always so obsessed with who likes them and who doesn't. Yeah. There, and that would be my last point. Did you want to add anything else? No, I'm good. I'm good. All right. I'm sure I'm going to watch this unfold even more. I wonder what reprisals you and I should expect. We'll <laughs> see. Um, please don't like movies. everybody. Me, this is a Max from Escaping Atheism. Deflating Atheism here has his own channel. Please give us both a like, a subscribe, support us on Patreon, support us on athe escapingatheism.com, and watch the great atheist meltdown of 2017 sure. continue. Yeah. Yes. God bless everybody.